Welcome to the Orthopedic Film Festival 2022, the first ever international film festival made for and by orthopedic and trauma surgeons. We want to take this opportunity to say a special thank to our chairs and pioneer partners Bauerfeind, Geistlich, Methis, Midi and Tetec, the innovative industry leaders supporting the realization of this flagship event. So we will go directly into the topic because I think everyone is waiting for the videos. So let's start from the smaller implants. So go into the world of individualized mini implants. And so we have the first video, which is done by Johannes Holtz from Hamburg. And we are really looking forward what Johannes has to tell us about these individualized mini implants. Hello, my name is Johannes Holtz from the Auto Centrum in Hamburg. I present a case of a 50-year-old patient with osteonocrisis of the medial fibral conduct. We used the Ipicilla technology to identify and uh, design a patient-specific mini middle implant to cover the defect. As you can see here on the 3D imaging, you can identify the subchondral bone edema and the grade 4 lesion of the cartilage. You then choose, you then choose um, the implant, which will cover the defect and even the patient-specific guide to do and uh, uh, provide the, the instrumentation. Now you will see my power video on this surgical technique. Thank you very much. Now my power video to demonstrate the surgical technique of a twin epicela. In the OR, you have the EPCF planning at the wall. We make an incision long enough to fully expose the condyle and identify the area of the lesion. Make sure that the soft tissue is big enough to host then the epiguide. I look through the circular opening of the epiguide and make sure that the bottom surface is placed flush to the cartilage surface all the way around the opening. This is very important to achieve the correct drilling angle and depth. We use a surgical <clears throat> drill and at least three surgical pins to attach the cure and to cure the cure the guide to the bone. The insert in the epiguide is placed in either of the two positions. We use the insert during the drilling of both holes and we check that the insert is fully seated into the epiguide with its top surface flush with the top of the epiguide. We mount the drilling socket into the IPI guide. The drilling socket guides first drill steps. We check that the drilling socket is set in its correct position relative to the IPI guide. The error of the rim of the drilling socket must be in line with the error of the insert. Both holes are always drilled to the same depth before any adjustment is made to another depth. We attach the epidrill to the assigned surgical drill. Both insert and drilling socket must be fully seated correctly. I use one hand to hold the drilling socket steady in the epi guide and the other hand to control the surgical drill. The epidrill is inserted in the drilling socket. I start drilling and drill until the epidrill stops at the top of the drilling socket. I lift it up. The insert from the epi guide, turn it around and drill again. I use moderate speed and force and I use leverage through the opening of the epi guide during drilling to minimize heat effects and the rinse away of bone and tissue debris. I insert the epi dummy into the drilled hole with its direction mark aligned with the direction mark of the epi guide. I compare the depth of the epi dummy to a surface with the surrounding cartilage at and assess the height differences. If the safe zone of 0.4 to 1 mm below the ejecting cartilage surface is achieved, the drilling is finished. If not, I continue adjusting the drilling according to the previous steps. Finally, I remove the epi guide and check the drill depth again. I insert the epi dummy into the drilled hole with its direction mark aligned with the mark on the cartilage surface. Then I gently place the epi sealer femoral twin into the drilled hole. I check the direction mark on the epi sealer is aligned with the direction mark on the cartilage. I use my fingers to gently press the epicilla down into the drilled holes and then I tap it down gently with the handpiece. Make sure that you do this very gently 
and even supply forces. Now the epicelia is in place. I check with the ejecting cartilage the final height. I close the soft tissue window and I finish the surgery. In summary, partial new resurfacing is a growing segment with variable results, especially in custom-made implants with up to 50% revision rate at five years. The epicelar, which is a patient-specific implant, is an excellent option for the isolated chondral or osteochondral lesion with low failure rates at five years, only 11% in comparison to the German arthroplasty register, 8% at six years for unis. So it has a good clinical improvement in our patients. It's individualized design, which adapts to depth and location is perfectly achieved. Surgical technique and instrumentation is excellent, but there is a need for correct indication and the patient selection is the key in this surgery. Thank you very much. What a great start. Johannes, this was a fantastic video and really appreciate your submission. So um, we directly start with the discussion. Alan, do you have a question? Also, I would like to congratulate Johannes. It was very, very good. Um, maybe, maybe just a few comments. Uh, first of all, I think it's, it's a great educational value of this video because um, I have no experience personally with the EpiSurf and based on this video, I think I could repeat the technical procedure. It was very well portrayed. And also I would like to compliment on directing because it's very difficult to, to show. Uh, the best view is from the surgeon's perspective. So it's very difficult to film this. And I think Johannes did an excellent job. So, and also he gave a lot of uh, a scientific background. He, uh, uh, he cited the German Anthroposity Register. So basically, I think overall, it's, it's a, in six minutes, uh, this is great. Uh, maybe just one question from your, uh, from your experience. Uh, what is the rehab protocol? Do you think, uh, is there any uh, specifics to it? Uh, do you compare, how do you compare it to UNIS and uh, so on? No, it's pretty much the same protocol as a uni. So full weight bearing as soon as a patient is um, capable to do that by pain or pain relief um, or the soft tissue swelling that could prevent him. But uh, there are no restrictions in, in, in concerns of weight bearing. Crutches can be used uh, for comfort. We have no limitation to bending action to a range of motion. And uh, we, because it's um, a bony ingrowth, I mean, it's a, a cementless implantation, we are a little bit aware of, um, let's say, sportive uh, action. We would suggest to do that after three months and the bone healing is completely finished. Thank you. Johannes, you emphasize the importance of the perfect indication. Can you give us in some words what is the ideal patient? So we know that we don't live in an ideal world, but if you would have an ideal patient, what is your ideal patient? Well, we are looking for a solution for mid-aged patients. So it's not the very young patient, but it's not the patient who typically is identified for a partial or total knee replacement, so 60 and over. So we have this group of patients, 40 to 50, where we have different uh, patient uh, treatment options like HTO, biological repair. If you look on the uh, collect uh, of, of the um, uh, patient group we have treated so far, and we have an international uh, multi-center study with uh, 80 patients, we have the own experience of the 53 implantations. Um, and if we look on those patients, um, <clears throat> these are two thirds of these patients are treated already biological and biological treatment didn't last long or has failed. So the patient is unsatisfied. So uh, the biological option is already um, taken. And uh, these are the optimal patients. So not, never do we think twice when it didn't work. And, and these are probably the best patient group to treat with. Um, so not the, in the first sense of treatment, but in the second uh, line of defense, we do this. So if biological repair has failed, this, um, you can have osteonecrosis, I showed in the case. These are very nice cases to treat because you have the chance to decide the depth of the implant. So you cover the pathology in the subchondral bone as well. 
And uh, you have to be aware that radiolog radiological signs like uh, narrowing of the bone uh, of the um, joint space has not to be evident. So that the radiological um, appearance of an X-ray should be rather normal, no osteoarthritis signs there, because you're taking part in treatment of a focal um, re uh, cartilage repair. Um, that's what it is. And you have to be sure that the implant size is covering the defect size uh, to an extent 